Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being patient this morning. Things were a little bit hectic, but I'm here. I made it. So let's make this happen. For today's class, we are going to move into unit six notes. We are essentially going to learn about operations on polynomials. We're going to le learn about how to, good morning, Doc. We're going to learn about how to use exponent rules. That's going to be a little bit tricky. We'll probably take a couple class sessions to cover all of those exponent rules. But that is one particular section that is going to be incredibly perfect for writing on like index cards, you know, like write the rule, write an example on the back or write, you know, the name of the rule and then in words describe what that rule implies, what it says to do. So things like that. We'll get there when we get there. Um, but we're gonna start by looking at operations on polynomials by identifying what a polynomial is, parts of a polynomial, how to describe them in terms of the number of terms and in terms of degree. That should run really quickly and we should definitely still have time to look at operations, meaning combining like terms by distributing a positive or a negative. And you'll see, no worries about that. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you again for your patience. Let's take a look. Operations on polynomials and understanding exponents. So a polynomial is a finite sum of terms in which, hi Mwada, in which all variables have whole, or I should say, let's try this again. This should be positive. Let's put the positive. It should have positive whole number exponents, okay? They should have positive whole number exponents exponents and no variable appears in the denominator okay a polynomial is a finite countable sum of terms in which all variables have positive whole number exponents right that's the power and no variable appear appears in the denominator so according to this definition well let's take a look at these expressions and determine whether or not they're a polynomial so we have our first one, 1 fifth x to the third plus 2 thirds x squared minus 4x. So a polynomial is a finite sum of terms. So we only have one, two, three terms. And each of those have positive whole number exponents. So on the variable, right? And no variable appears in the denominator. Notice we have x to the third, positive whole number. x to the second, positive whole number x to the first. If you guess to the first power, nicely done, positive whole number. So we can say that yes, this is a polynomial by definition. Take a look at your second example. We have b to the negative fourth, bam. Do you see right there that this fails? It's not a polynomial. So b to the negative fourth plus 3c squared minus 1 over d to the third power. It fails in two locations. You only need it to fail once in order for it to not be defined as a polynomial. It's just an expression. So this is, we are going to write no, this is not a polynomial since it fails the definition. Okay, perfect. So next we're gonna talk about um, polynomials in terms of classifying them. So the leading term, the term in the front, the leading term of a polynomial is the term with the highest degree. Okay, the leading term of a polynomial is the term with the highest degree. We should always write our polynomials in descending order occur according to degree. Now, notice here I've written out the definition for degree. That way you can understand what the heck I'm talking about. So the degree of a term is the total power of that term. When you see the word total, doesn't that kind of imply like a sum? That's interesting. So the total power of a single term. So we're going to analyze each term individually and then decide what their degrees are. 
Let me show you. So write the following polynomial in descending order from biggest to smallest. State the degree of each term and identify the coefficients of each term. And the coefficients are the numerical part of each term with a variable. Let's take a look at this. Our first term is 3m to the fifth. The degree of a term is the same as the total power of a single term. So the power of my term is 5, which means my degree, if we were to write them out, we're going to say degree, and let's list them. The degree of my first term is simply 5. Take a look at your second term, negative 11m to the second power. Notice the power here is 2. That is the same as my degree. So degree, the degree of my second term is 2. Take a look at your third term, negative 2m to the 7th n to the 3rd power. Right there, I want you to say, oh, this is interesting. If we go back to the definition of degree, that is the total power of a single term. Having said that, we have two powers, don't we? This is one term. Every term is separated by addition and subtraction. So this is one term here. And my powers are 7 and 3, so the total power is 7 plus 3, which is 10. So right now, that's winning. That's the highest degree. Take a look at your fourth term, a negative 9. Notice that there's no variable. So because there is no variable, this actually has degree 0, which doesn't mean it goes away. It's just a degree, right? We're just classifying each term according to degree. So that is degree 0. It's almost like saying, you know, let's say you have an m to the 0 power. Well, anything to the zero power is one, right, except for zero. So anything to the zero power except for zero is one. So it's like negative nine times one is still negative nine. We'll see a lot of that in the future. No worries. And then our last term is six n to the fourth, where my power is four. Now that I have identified each of the degrees, I can now rewrite this polynomial in descending order. Remember, biggest to smallest. So my first term is going to be the term that has degree 10, which is negative 2m to the 7th n to the 3rd. So in descending order, so I'm going to write descending order, we have negative 2m to the 7th n to the 3rd power. My next term is going to be the degree of 5, right? That's the next highest. So it's a positive, so plus 3m to the 5th. Then I have a 6n to the 4th, so plus 6n to the 4th. Next, I have negative 11m squared. And finally, I have minus 9. And that is how you write a polynomial in descending order from biggest degree to smallest degree. Let's turn the page and keep looking at how to classify polynomials. So polynomials are classified according to the number of terms. So for instance, let's say that I want to describe a polynomial that has one term. So an example of that could be negative 5p to the sixth power, right? That is one term negative 5p to the 6th power. Because this is one term, the prefix mono, we're going to write in front of the meal. So monomial is how you would describe a one-term polynomial. Monomial. We then have two terms. So I'm going to give you an example of a two-term polynomial. And we could write, oh, I don't know, um, let's do 1 third m to the um, second power minus 11m. We'll leave it minus 11m. I could have written to the first power, but we don't need that. We know it's implied. So 1 third m to the second minus 11m, that's a two-term polynomial. Think of a prefix that describes two 
and you'll come to binomial. You'll think of bi meaning two. Monomial, one, binomial, two. What about three terms? Go ahead and type that into the chat if you know the, the name for a three-term polynomial. I'm going to write out an example of that. So something we'll see a lot of when we get into factoring, which is unit seven, okay, that's coming up right after this unit. Um, we may see something like 4a to the second power plus um, 7ab minus 10b squared. So that's an example of a three-term polynomial, or as Noelia described it, a trinomial. Perfect. Yes, Doc, excellent. A trinomial. That is a, the name for a three-term polynomial. Excellent, Kevin. Okay, thank you, Kayla. Perfect. Now, we also have terms that have higher numbers, right? The, the, so, for instance, if we have literally four terms, five terms, six terms, seven terms, whatever it is, we're then just going to use the number associated. So, it's a four-term polynomial. If it's five terms, we'll say it's a five-term polynomial. If it's six terms, we're going to say it's a six-term polynomial, that kind of thing. So an example of a four-term polynomial could be um, 15, we'll use b to the second power, um, minus 9bm squared plus 4b squared m, and then, you know, minus 11. Right, that's a four-term polynomial. Notice how this is not in descending order, but I've written out four terms. We know there are four terms because they're separated by addition and subtraction. The degree of an entire polynomial is the same as the degree of the highest term. Okay, the degree of a polynomial is the same as the degree of the highest term. So meaning for the last problem that we had, and I'm just going to turn back, hopefully you don't mind. The last problem that we had, the biggest term, the term with the highest degree was a negative 2m seventh n to the third, which is why we wrote it first. So the degree of this polynomial is 10. Think of it as like it's the biggest term, so we classify the entire polynomial based on the biggest term, right? Degree 10, even though this is degree 5, 4, 2, and then 0, the degree of the entire polynomial is going to be 10 because that's the highest term, okay? Very cool. So polynomials can also be classified according to degree. So we've actually seen degree one before. I'm going to give you an example of a polynomial that has degree one. And actually, I'm going to give you an equation that reflects this. So you have all seen equations like this. Y is equal to one third X plus five. You all know what that looks like you know that this is a line. You also know how to graph that. You would start by saying, oh, my y-intercept is 0, 5, and my slope is 1 over 3. So you'd start by plotting the point 0, 5, and then you'd go up 1 and run to the right 3. So you know how to graph this, and you all recognize that this is a line. So the polynomial is classified as linear, okay? This is a linear polynomial. And actually, I should have, wrote, I should have written an example here. No big deal. Let's look at degree 2. Let me give you an example of a polynomial that's degree 2. Uh, let's say we had x to the second power minus 10x plus we'll do um, 18, okay? x squared minus 10x plus 18. Notice in this case we have three terms, so it's a trinomial. But notice my biggest power is 2, so this is degree 2. 
And because this polynomial is degree 2, it's actually called quadratic. This is a quadratic polynomial. It's no longer linear. Our first equation was a line, right? We can graph it. We start at 0, 5, up 1 over 3. So my first equation was a line. My second equation, because it's quadratic, is actually now a parabola. So it's, it almost looks like a U. Okay, in this case, it's open upwards, so it's concave upwards. If it were an, a negative leading term, it'd be concave downwards. It would almost look like a frown instead of a smile, right? If it's a negative, it'll be an upside down U or like a frown, okay? And again, the degree of a polynomial is the same as the power of its highest term, the degree of its highest term. So in this case, degree two, perfect quadratic. Notice the powers here, one, one, right? Degree one, so it's a linear. Another one you'll see potentially, not that we're going to graph this at all in 098, but I just want you to see it, is degree three. So an example of that is simply, you know, let's do four X to the third power. And I don't need a bunch of terms. I just need to know the degree of the polynomial. And that's three. In which case, this would be considered cubic, okay, cubic. So cubic functions, again, they take on uh, yet another shape. So for instance, you may see a cubic function that looks kind of like this. And this is just a nice way to see it. Sometimes it's not as curvaceous, but essentially it's, we're, we're saying that there are three roots. And again, that's something that you'll talk about in your next algebra class. Cool. So what I want you to do is to take a moment and to classify each expression here according to the number of terms and the degree. So for each one, I'm looking for you to tell me, is it a monomial, binomial, trinomial, four-term polynomial? And then I want you to tell me, is this linear? Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? So take a few minutes and classify each of these four statements. The first one is negative 4m n to the second power plus a third. The second one is negative 9m to the negative 2 plus 5n squared plus 11mn. Your third one is 15x. And your fourth one is 7a squared minus 1 half a plus 4. Go ahead and classify those. And then when you're done, in the chat, simply type done. Starting now. Excellent. Let's take a look at each of these. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, I have one, two terms in problem number one. So because I have two terms, this is definitely a binomial. The next thing I'm going to do is say, well, what are the degrees of each of my terms? So my first term, notice that m is being raised to the first power and n is being raised to the second power. So the combined degree of my first term is three, right? My first term is degree three. My second term, because there is no variable, is degree zero. So the degree of my polynomial is three. And we learned that if the degree is three, we can call it a cubic function or a cubic polynomial. Good. So binomial cubic is what you're looking for. And that's because of that extra variable to the power of one right there. So be super careful. Take a look at number two. Negative 9m to the negative second power, whoa, whoa, whoa. This right here should have been a red flag to you because we know that this completely fails the definition. So we can actually say, ooh, tricky, tricky, this is not a polynomial. Even though you looked at it and you said, well, there are three terms, sure, but it's still not a polynomial. Good, so two is complete. Number three, we have 15x. That is simply one term. We can call that a monomial. And then notice that the power of my term is one, so the, the degree is one. And if my degree is one, we know that it is linear. Perfect. And lastly, number four. Notice we have one, two, three terms. So we can classify this as a trinomial. 
And then let's check out the degree. So the degree of my first term is 2. The degree of my second term is 1. The degree of my third term is 0. So the highest degree is 2, which means this polynomial is quadratic. Excellent! I hope that went really well. I could see 1 and 2 being super tricky, but I'm, I'm expecting that most of you got 3 and 4 totally correct. Monomial linear and then trinomial quadratic. Excellent work. Let's turn the page. As a reminder, terms are generally separated by addition or subtraction signs. Additionally, recall that when we combine like terms, we add or subtract the coefficients and keep the variables to the same power. So as a quick reminder to you, let's go back to the first page for a moment. If we're going to classify the coefficients, which I'm going to write here coefficients, we're going to look at each term that has variables and identify the numerical part, meaning the number in front of the variable or variables. So in this case, my coefficient for my first term is negative 2. The coefficient of my second term is a positive 3. The coefficient of my next term is a positive 6. The coefficient of my last term is a negative, or of my second to last term is a negative 11. Now, when you see a term without a variable, this is called a constant. Okay, this is called a constant. It will not vary because it does not have a variable. I hope that makes sense. So here's my constant term, and we can identify each of their coefficients. Good. Let's start to add and subtract polynomials. So let's check it out. <clears throat> Number one, what we're going to do for each of these problems is we're first going to identify the operation by writing it in the box. Then we perform that operation. So if we examine number one carefully, do you agree that I have a trinomial plus a binomial? So my indicated operation is addition. That's what I'm going to write inside of the box. When I keep this in mind, because my operation is addition, I'm going to combine like terms. Now you're probably thinking, but wait a second, there are sets of parentheses everywhere. Well, we can easily drop the parentheses by distributing. Think of the fact that in front of the set of the parentheses, even though nothing is written, we have a one here. So if I wrote a 1 in front of that set of parentheses and then I distributed, well, 1 times 3x squared is still 3x squared. 1 times negative 2x is still negative 2x. 1 times positive 7 is still positive 7. Similarly, in front of this set of parentheses, we have a plus, but more than that, it's a positive 1. So positive 1 times 2 thirds x squared is still positive 2 thirds x squared. And then a positive 1 times a negative 4x is still a negative 4x. So the first thing we want to do is we always want to essentially distribute to drop parentheses. Distribute to drop parentheses. In this case, the distributive property is being completed by multiplying by a positive 1, right? A positive 1 is what's keeping everything inside of the parentheses. But that's actually pretty great because essentially it means you don't change any of the signs, right? You just simply drop the parentheses. So now we're ready to combine like terms. As a reminder, your like terms have to have the same variable to the same power. If you have multiple variables, they have to have the same variables to the same powers. So if it's something like m squared n to the third, your other term has to have m squared n to the third. If your first term has a p to the fifth, your other like term has to have a p to the fifth, right? 
they have to have the same variables to the same power. And then all you do is you combine their coefficients, but you keep that variable to whatever that power is. You don't change that. There is no altering. Think of it as you're collecting these and you're saying, well, how many of these do I have? How many of this type do I have? Okay, let me show you. So our first pair of like terms is 3x squared and a positive 2 thirds x squared. I wanted to identify these two first because they have the highest degree. Notice my degree here is 2 and my degree here is also 2. So these are like terms. So we have a 3x squared plus 2 thirds x squared. Well, if we did a little bit of side work, because I know some of you are not fans of adding or subtracting fractions, that's a whole number 3, so 3 over 1 plus 2 over 3. You know how to add fractions. You need a common denominator. So we're going to multiply the first fraction by 3 over 3. That gives me 9 over 3 plus 2 over 3, which becomes 11 over 3. So when I combine 3x squared plus 2 thirds x squared, I get 11 thirds x squared. Notice I'm saying, hey, how many x squareds do I have? And you're going to say, oh, you have 11 thirds of them. Your next pair of like terms is going to be a negative 2x and a negative 4x. So notice they have the same variable to the same power. That power is 1. So these are both degree 1. So negative 2x and another negative 4x, well, that's going to give me negative 6x. And we know that because we're simply combining their coefficients. A negative 2 and a negative 4 give you a negative 6. Notice I also have a plus 7. It does not have a like term, which is not a big deal. We simply bring down the plus 7 and we're done. That's all we have to do. Good. As always, if you have questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Let's take a look at number 2. Notice in number 2, I have a trinomial minus a trinomial. So my indicated operation here is subtraction. Trinomial minus another trinomial. Now, we want to distribute to drop parentheses. If you take a look at your first set of parentheses, there's a positive 1 in front. So when you distribute that positive 1, you're left with x to the third minus 2x plus 9, which is pretty cool because essentially you're just saying it's not changing anything. Now, look at the second set of parentheses. There's a minus in front of this one. So technically, you actually have a negative 1 in front of that set of parentheses. So we have to be careful when we distribute that negative 1 to each of those terms. Think about this logically. A negative times a negative x squared is going to be a positive x squared, right? A negative times a positive 5x is a negative 5x. A negative times a negative 13y is a positive 13y. So as you do this, just be really careful. Pay attention to the signs. Be incredibly picky as you do these. All right, let's write our answer in descending order. We're going to start with a term with the highest degree, and that is x to the third. There is no other um, x to the third term, so I'm simply going to bring that down. So that one's done. Then I notice here I have an x squared. There is no other x squared term, so we're also going to bring that one down. So plus x squared. Notice they're separate terms. Keep them separate. They're not like, so you can't combine them. x to the third plus x to the second will never be x to the fifth. They are not like terms. You cannot combine them. Next, we have a negative 2x and a negative 5x. Well, those are definitely like terms. Negative 2x and a negative 5x leaves us with a negative 7x. But notice, these are both degree 1, but this is also degree 1, a 13y. When you have terms that have the same degree, you'll want to then put them in alphabetical order. 
So we put the term with the x before we write the term with the y. So notice here the 13y, there is no other term with a y, so I can bring that down. And then my last term is a positive 9. Again, because there's no like term. So notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. This is a 5-term polynomial. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So how about you all give number 3 a shot? So notice that you still have to indicate the operation first. Do you see one operation? Do you see more than one operation? Thank you, Kayla and Kevin. If you do see more than one, write it down. If you think it's worth describing, write it down. Then perform the indicated operation. So I want you to take number three home with you. Give this a shot. You can do it right now in the next couple minutes. See what you think and then bring that to tomorrow's class and we'll look at that first thing. Again, thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> As you can see, it's a little bit of a chaos, but we got it under control. And I love that um, we all were able to meet today. All right. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And hopefully mine will go smooth too. Please wish me luck. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>